Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how I make really large copper crystals. Um, essentially, I use a small piece of wire. This is a little, a little thicker wire, but uh, this will be the cathode. This is going to be what the crystals grow on. It's quite dirty, as you can see. Um, but we're going to take some sandpaper to that and, and clean it up before we use it. This is a anode that I had poured. This is just made from scrap copper, uh, pipe, wire, things like that. Um, I just crushed it all, threw it into a crucible, and melted it in, into a little rectangle mold. I, drew, I drilled a little hole at the top here if it'll focus. Well, there it goes. Uh, that is so I can clip the wire lead, the alligator clip, onto it whenever it goes into solution. The solution I use, this is some copper sulfate. I just uh, mix it in with some water and that is it. Use a cheap bench top power supply. Uh, I don't really feed a whole lot of power to it at all. In fact, this is a really slow process. This takes about a month. I got these little helping hands here. This is to help hold the wires and everything together. But first I'm going to get this bent up and well, I'm going to go ahead and sand it first, and then I'm going to go ahead and get it bent up and get it ready to accept crystals in here. Okay, so uh, I went ahead and got this sanded down. Just took the, the surface corrosion off of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it up so it will be the cathode inside this, this dish here. First thing I'm going to go ahead and do is make a hook. And what this will do, this will hang on the edge and give you something to put your gated clip on. And then we're just going to go ahead and bend it up so we can get a lot of uh, surface area with into the uh, solution of copper sulfate. And it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. I mean, if you're just growing crystals, it doesn't really matter so much the uh, the pattern you use back and forth. What does make a difference is what is closer to the anode. So if you can make it all, you know, two dimensional, that is that is the best way to do so that I found. Otherwise, if you have a, a part that's jutting forward, uh, the crystals will grow from that and not from anything else. You want it to grow on as much much of the copper that you can. Okay, let's see if this is too much. Okay, see this is uh, going down a touch in the bottom. That is something that you don't want because you're going to get a lot of uh, sediment and everything down at the bottom and that will conduct the current and that will short out your, your cell here and you just won't get any crystals. So, I'm going to smush this up. Here we go. Okay, it's getting better, but it's still pretty close to the bottom. You want to leave a decent, decent amount of uh, gap there. As you can see, there's about that much between the cathode and the bottom. Now the next thing I need to go ahead and do is get the solution of copper sulfate mixed up. This copper sulfate, um, I couldn't really, I've had this stuff for a long time, so it would be really hard to say exactly where I sourced it. Um, but I do know I had gotten a lot of it from, say, like Home Depot or Lowe's, and it is used as a stump remover, or a, not a stump remover, a uh, root killer for septic systems. And it's pretty much pure copper sulfate. So what I'm going to do, I got this other strand of copper, 
This is what I'm going to go ahead and use as a stir rod. And I'm going to get the distilled water. I'm going to go ahead and start getting it dissolved. Now, I can tell you already, there is some contaminants in here. Um, probably not removed from the last time that I crystallized this stuff out. Uh, you shouldn't get this, this greenish color. It should be straight blue. So what I'm going to end up having to do is I'm going to have to uh, go ahead and get everything in here dissolved. And then hopefully this is a precipitate that I can filter out. So uh, I will go ahead and get this filtered out once I get everything in here dissolved and we will see if that clears it up a little bit. And then here you can see the obvious difference that a filtration will make. We're going from this greenish sludge stuff to this nice bright blue. And that's the color it's supposed to be whenever uh, it's at saturation. I'm just filtering it through a coffee filter and some cotton at the bottom. Okay, so now that I have the solution filtered, it's time to go ahead and get this thing up and going. This I had got bent up earlier, and we're just going to go ahead and drop it in like that. Or we'll let it hang. And then the uh, anode here, I put a zip tie on it. And this is just to help hold it up so it doesn't fall over and slosh. This thing's got quite a bit of weight to it. And this is what I'm going to use the helping hands for. Help hold that up. Now I find you want it to have as much distance as your wick, as your dish will allow uh, between the anode and the cathode. Now if you have problems remembering which side, which polarity the anode is, or the cathode. The way I always remembered it is the anode starts with an A, just like add. And, uh, you know, add is like positive. And so I'd always remember anode is positive add. Okay. So I've got the gator clip hooked up in that little hole that I drilled up at the top. And then I've got the other side of the helping hands holding on to that uh, piece of plastic, that zip tie. And then I've got the negative side that I will hook up here. And that's not, I mean, once the crystals get larger, it'll have some weight to it. Uh, but right now, you don't really have to worry about keeping it held up. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn on my power supply. As you can see, it's about one volt. Uh, it's not even showing that it's drawing a current. Now let's go ahead and turn up the voltage a little bit just to be sure that there is a connection. Okay, so there is current going through. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull it down to 1.2-1.3 volts. Um, the purpose for that is is you want it to take a nice long time. Uh, the longer that you wait for these crystals to grow uh, and the slower you do it, the bigger they will get. Uh, if you do it real fast, say in a matter of days, you, they'll get these really fine hair-like crystals. And those just, they fall apart and they oxidize quickly and they're not very cool. Uh, but I let this grow for about a month and you get some really nice beautiful crystals out of it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take video periodically throughout the growth of this and um, then I'll get everything compiled together at the end. Okay, so this is after about a day and a half of growth. We'll pull these out. As you can see, we're starting to get some crystals growing on here. Nice shiny ones. And these are going to want uh, be the crystals that get really large. Um, this is probably going to be the last time I take it out of the solution. Um, once the crystals start to get fairly large, uh, they get fairly brittle, at least at the edges, um, or where they connect to the wire. 
uh, they'll fall off and then they won't grow anymore. And then I gotta fish them out of the bottom. Uh, but from here on out, I usually take a flashlight and shine it in to take a look and see what's going on in there. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of dust um, around this anode. That's probably things like flux and whatnot that was still on the brick from when I cast it. Uh, that's just fallen off in, into the solution at the bottom. Uh, but as you can see, it's a really slow, slow growth. Like I said, this is after about a day and a half. I'll probably uh, take another picture or shoot some more video after about a week. Hey guys, so I wanted to give you an update. This is about a week in on the uh, crystal growth. And as you can see, there's quite a few growing in there. Um, I've got it kind of tucked away. Um, it looks like it's, they're not big enough that they would break. So, I can take a look real quick. If it'll focus. Come on. Oh, I thought it was going to. There it goes. And as you can see, they're starting to flesh themselves out. Now, these crystals are going to get a lot bigger. Like I said, I'm hoping to get maybe um, probably a good 10 centimeter long. Well, if you could fit 10 centimeters in there. I want to get it as close to this as I can without it touching. So these are the crystals at about the two week mark. You can see they're really starting to grow out. Um, and as the crystals grow, the power consumption of this is going to increase a little bit. Not a whole lot. Um, it's using about 138 milliamps, between 130 and 140 milliamps. And I dropped the voltage down uh, to one volt uh, just so these thicken up a little bit so they don't become so thin. And you can see on the anode, it's getting eaten away. You can see all the dust at the bottom. And the stuff that's fallen off is things like uh, copper oxides, the flux that was on the bar, um, metals you know that aren't copper. And one curious thing is there's a hole being eaten in it. It gets pretty deep in there. I'm not sure why it's being eaten away like that, but we'll get a better look at it once we pull it out of the solution. So we are right around the three week mark now. Um, and you can see there's quite a bit more growth going on. Um, as well as power consumption increase. Uh, I dropped the voltage a little bit more and the current is still going up which means uh, that's because of the increased surface area of the cathode. Okay, just giving you another update here. Uh, this is day 47 on the growing of these. Um, as you can see they're getting quite large and thickening up. Um, I don't know how well you can tell through the camera but these crystals are really shiny. Um, at least up front they are. Back here in the back they look really dull. Um, the only way I have found to prevent that is by moving the anode in respect to the cathode uh, essentially behind the crystals and then that will replate the back uh, and give it a shine again however the the really large crystals like that one shooting off to the side for the most part looks good all the way down um, so the crystals that you break off um, and keep usually look pretty good even though you get these darker ones um, you can see the anode is getting eaten away pretty good At some point, I'm going to have to submerge the rest of that into it. And you'll see all the crud and sediment at the bottom. Um, I show you in a previous video what I do with that after I filter it out. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description if you haven't seen that yet. Okay, so this is what the crystals look like after 67 days. Um, it's getting large enough now, though, that I'm going to go ahead and pull them out, and we will see how they look. 
Now one thing you're going to have happen to you if you try this is you're going to have the uh, crystals of copper sulfate growing up the side of the glass here. Um, there's not a real good way to prevent that, but to deal with it, what I do is I just use a squirt bottle and I go around and squirt the edges like this and it'll wash most of the crystals back in and dissolve a good chunk of them. And uh, you can just do that once a day all the way around and then it keeps it under control and you don't get it all around the outside here. Uh, as you can see I did uh, slack on it a little bit but um, that's the way it works sometimes. Okay, so this is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from solution. We're gonna go ahead and turn off the power and scooch the power supply to the side. Go ahead and remove the anode first. Before I set it down, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it off and clean it. Okay. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to push this underneath so I can spray it and let it drip. Now these crystals are really brittle so I'm probably going to break some as I take some out. I want to get as much of that copper sulfate out as possible. And we will let this sit and drip and dry for a few minutes, and then we will go ahead and pick the crystals off. And here is the copper bar, the anode that I was plating from. You can see the uh, crystals of the copper in there that formed during cooling when I poured this. Pretty interesting looking, but as you can see, there's still quite a bit left here that I'm going to be I can plate from, um, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. And once I pick these crystals off, I'm going to go ahead and sink that back in, and we'll keep growing off this. Okay, so now that these are dried, I am going to attempt to carefully place them on the paper towel and pull the big crystals off. Now this one is the biggest, so... Um, well, I'll put a quarter here so you can kind of see the size comparison. Yeah, this one is going to break in the middle. Yep. That's okay, they're still pretty large crystals.
as you can hear, we have a, a newborn to attend to as well. Now some of these crystals are darker color, especially when you get down to the base. And what I do for that is I take my Dremel with a tiny wire wheel and just quickly go over it and it shines it right up like the rest. Okay, I think that is all I'm going to pick off this one. I might pick a couple more of these smaller ones, but uh, I'm going to leave the rest on here so I can go ahead and put it back in solution and keep growing. 